so this is the second video uh, about that I'm making about torque and horsepower. Uh, the first video was a very simple approach. I also didn't really mention the transmission. I was really just explaining the conceptual difference between torque and horsepower. I want to bring the transmission into it and really explain why uh, horsepower is a, a more useful number to know than the torque for an engine, uh, like maximums. And I'm, we're, we're talking about horsepower maximum or torque maximum. You see those numbers published a lot. My argument is that maximum torque that they're giving you does not tell you anything. And they know that, they just publish it because they can and you know, it looks good. The transmission, as well as the rear differential, change the torque dramatically. Uh, a, a typical rear differential in a truck, for example, is a ratio of three or four to one. That changes the torque by that factor, three or four. That's a big, big change in torque. The transmission does the same thing. It's changing torque and RPM. Um, any gear ratio does that. It just trades off torque and RPM. So, you can't know the torque at the rear axle without knowing both the torque that the engine is producing as well as the RPM at which it's being produced. The RPM is relevant because that determines what kind of gearing you're gonna have between the engine and the wheels. And, and that gearing changes the torque dramatically. So just knowing the maximum torque of the engine is completely irrelevant. So let me try to illustrate this. So let's say I wanna improve the performance of my bike. I can do two things. I can improve torque or I can just keep the same torque and make it happen at a higher RPM. So how would doing the second thing make me faster? It lets me stay in lower gears longer, which means more torque at the rear wheel. So doing either of those things means that my engine is making more horsepower. Yes, it's a different day in a different place. Get over it. Let's say you got two motorcycles. They're both the same weight and same weight riders and they're neck and neck and they're rolling along at a low speed, same speed and they just pin the throttle. Which one's gonna go quicker? Well, the one that has more push from the rear wheel, right? The one that's being pushed harder is gonna go faster. Duh. Okay, so how do we figure out how much push each bike is getting? Do we need to know the engine's torque? Or do we need to know the horsepower? In order to figure out the push that the beach bike is getting, using engine torque, we have to know the following. We have to know the torque of the, the torque that the engine's producing. We have to know the total gear ratio between the, the engine and the wheel. And we have to know the diameter of the rear wheel. We have to know all those things in order to figure out the push that the bike is getting from the engine. So you gotta take the sprocket ratio and multiply that by the total gear ratio through the transmission and that gives you the total gear ratio and then you got to get a measuring tape out and measure the rear tire and give me those numbers and then I'll, I can figure out the push. Or you can give me the, the horsepower and how fast the bike is going and I can tell you how much push you're getting. The faster you're going, the less torque you're going to actually be able to get to the rear wheel. Because you have a fixed amount of power and that's it. What's going on with this guy's lights? He's got lights on the top of his car. Oh, it's a cop car and he doesn't have... He didn't see me. Whatever. He'll figure it out one day. So, I thought of a good analogy. Um, horsepower is like the amount of money. Uh, torque is like the size of the bills. And the transmission is like the bank teller. So if you're selling a car and somebody comes up, comes up to you and says, well, I'll give you all 20s for the car. And you go, well, I, how many? And he goes, well, they're $20 bills. I mean, they're more than the other guy. He's offering you 10s. And you say, well, I still don't know how much money you're offering for the car. I mean, that's, I don't really care what size the bills are. I can go to the bank teller, transmission, and get them changed for whatever I need. So, when you, when you state the maximum torque of an engine and try to say that that means something about the performance of the vehicle, it's like saying, you should accept my offer for your car because I'm offering you $20 bills. It doesn't mean anything. 
Also, there's a lot of people who believe torque is, is for acceleration, horsepower is for top speed. Acceleration and top speed are both tied to horsepower. Your gearing will affect the trade-off between acceleration and top speed. But another thing that affects performance uh, a little bit is the shape of the power curve. So let's say you have a scenario, and this is a real, a real case that, that can happen. So let's say you have two vehicles, uh, one, and they both have the same horsepower, and they're both the same weight. Uh, but one is quicker, and you can't figure out why. Why is one quicker in accelerating? And the reason is probably because that bike has a flatter power curve. That is that the engine is able to make more power at a non-ideal speed. And that can affect performance because, you know, when you first start off and you first let the clutch out, you're not running at an optimal RPM, you're running at a pretty low RPM. You know, when that clutch finally fully engages, you, that's, your engine kind of bogs a little bit. Um, and so a, a vehicle that has a flat power curve, you know, and makes a lot of power down low is going to benefit at that moment. It's going to get ahead at that moment when it's not running at its maximum power or torque. And same with, uh, you know, th shifting through the gears. As you're accelerating, you know, you're going back and forth a little bit. So, that's uh, how torque and horsepower relate to performance. Now you might still ask, uh, or be wondering why um, you, you commonly see uh, engines that rev really fast in race cars and engines that produce tons of torque and rev really slow in things like tractors and bulldozers. And the reasons for those uh, differences are usually not so much uh, the need for power because both engines uh, you know, can produce plenty of power. It's related much more to things like the weight of the engine, longevity, cost, uh, how quick you can change gears, you know, the rotating inertia of the engine, and things like that. Uh, a tractor doesn't have to change RPM really quickly, and so a big giant engine rotating at a constant RPM is not a problem. And also because a, a tractor uh, needs to run for very long periods of time in very adverse conditions and just be very reliable and kind of bulletproof, they make it a very big engine which rotates at low speeds, which means that its bushings and bearings can be made of relatively, sim uh, you know, standard materials, nothing too expensive or exotic. And it's going to be very reliable because you don't have very high RPM. Um, high RPM engines require exotic materials to stay reliable. So in a, in a race bike engine you'll have, you know, titanium connecting rods and also an engine that revs higher and produces less torque is going to be a smaller engine, a smaller displacement engine, which means you're going to get more power out of a smaller, lighter engine. So for performance vehicles, race cars, you're often looking for a small engine that revs fast because it's light and doesn't weigh down the vehicle. And, it, and also because it's a small engine, its rotating inertia is lower, meaning that it can change RPM very quickly, which makes gear shifts quicker. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh my gosh. This is such a great road. Jackson Creek Road, Bozeman, Montana. Look it up and come here and ride with me.